Dears uh, students of section 3, welcome back. This is uh, Professor Anand Badkir, your faculty for engineering graphics. So in this video, I am going to cover up upon projection of solids, a basic introduction. So in our uh, classroom interaction, uh, I have already covered uh, through the introduction part. So quickly, I just want to brush up few of the things as it's been a long time. Uh, so I just it will be better if you recall the things once again so projection of solids as you know the solids are basically a three-dimensional object which has length breadth and thickness bounded by its surfaces so solids can be basically classified into two headings polyhedron and uh, solids of revolution so we'll just see quickly what are these polyhedron signs solids of revolution so under polyhedrons we have something called as prisms so prism as you already know what has been explained it will be having two regular polygons which are parallel to one another for example in this example you have a triangular polygon here and you have one more triangular polygon these both are parallel to one another and these are connected by the rectangular faces so depending upon the geometry of the polygon it is named as triangular prism square prism pentagonal prism and rectangular prism so these are the few examples for uh, prisms <coughs> coming to pyramids so the main difference between the prism and pyramid is that in pyramid you won't be having uh, two polygon surfaces you will be just having one polygon which is the base and at the top you will be having something called as apex or vertex so all the corners will be joined to this common point called apex or vertex from the base corner so you can see here this is a triangle so henceforth it is a triangular pyramid and all the corners of this triangular base edge are connected to the apex and this is the axis which gives the length of the or height of the pyramid so in the same way you have a square pyramid pentagonal pyramid hexagonal pyramid Apart from this, you have something called as revolved surfaces, which is nothing but a cone over here, cylinder cone or a spear. So cone is having a circular base and then the circular base is connected by a surface which is not having any edges to the apex. Then you have something called as tetrahedron. So tetrahedron is nothing but it looks similar to your uh, triangular pyramid, but it is not triangular pyramid because in tetrahedron, the four uh, triangulars what you are going to see here this is the first base phase one phase two and the phase three all the four triangulars will be equilateral triangulars so that is why it is called as tetrahedron all the four triangles are equilateral triangle <clears throat> so that has been what explained here uh, pyramids different type of pyramid pentagonal pyramid as the base edge is a pentagon triangular pyramid square pyramid and rectangular pyramid now coming to few of the important parameters which you should know as uh, this will be very important when you are solving the problems firstly coming to the prisms so the prism will obviously have an axis which is from the center of the bottom face to the center of the top face when you connect this that is called as axis so this is the base edges of the prism and this is the top face of the edge is the base this is the top face sorry this is the base edges and these are the top face edges and these are the rectangular faces if you observe all the prisms whichever prism you take whether it is a triangular square pentagon or hexagon all the faces of the prism will be rectangular faces so you can see irrespective of whatever prism it is all the faces will be rectangular faces so this is a rectangular prism here you will have longer edge and shorter edge and this is a rectangular prism where the axis is inclined so you can see it as inclined axis similar way we have few nomenclature with respect to pyramids also so pyramid also has an axis then a base base edge now the difference between this prism and pyramid is here so all the prisms as i told you will be having rectangular faces all the pyramids whichever pyramid you take will be having triangular faces so you can see whichever pyramid you take all the faces of the pyramid will be triangular faces now the line which is joining from the corner of this base uh, of the pyramid to the apex point 
to this apex point this is called as slant edge so these edges which are connecting from the corner to the apex of the pyramid are called slant edges and these faces are called slant triangular faces the faces here are slant triangular faces and this is slant edge okay <clears throat> so solids of revolution uh, this is a simple concept if you take uh, the section of the solid if you cut this solid into one third space here you can see that you will get some rectangular profile here so this rectangle profile if you rotate it with respect to this axis then you will get a cylinder so that is why they are called as solids of revolution for every revolution you will be having one particular face so that face if you revolve it to 360 degree you will get that particular solid so in the same way this is cylinder cone and spear these are the three entities which are used for solid of revolution very important thing to remember is that in solids of revolution there will be no edges here as you have seen in this uh, prism sign pyramid you can see you have the edges over here but in solids of revolution you won't be having any edges it will be a smooth surface so henceforth uh, when you are solving the problems with respect to cone or a cylinder it uh, only for the construction purpose we are going to create some imaginary edges here which are called as generators so you can see here uh, we do not have the edges so we create some temporary edges or reference over the surface of the object and these are basically called as generators so these are just some imaginary edges which we are creating for our reference so usually we create 12 generators on the periphery of the object so if i take the <coughs> base of this cylinder i will divide the base of this cylinder into 12 equal parts so i will get 12 points on the circumference of the cylinder so these points i will join it from bottom uh, circle to top circle so the line joining from this bus uh, from this circumference of the bottom to top is called as the generator so this will uh, get a more clarity when i solve a problem with respect to this <clears throat> Now I'd like to explain you the scenario like how uh, a solid can be placed with respect to vertical and horizontal plane. So we already studied uh, projection of uh, uh, plane surfaces or laminas, right? So wherein uh, we have studied how a lamina can be placed with respect to VP and HP. In the similar way here I have taken one uh, triangular prism. So here the condition fixed is axis of the solid uh, remains perpendicular to HP so this is the axis of the solid it remains perpendicular to the horizontal plane this is the horizontal plane so keeping this as fixed what other conditions I can tell with respect to its faces that's what we are going to see so here first one is rectangular face parallel to VP so you can see here one of the rectangular face of this prism is parallel to the vertical plane this is your vertical plane so this face is parallel to vertical plane so remember i am talking all these cases uh, in a such a way that the axis is perpendicular to hp so i am keeping the axis perpendicular to hp and i am seeing with respect to the faces what all different conditions i can get so first condition is rectangular face parallel to vp so one of the face is parallel to vp coming to the second one rectangular face perpendicular to vp so now if i rotate this uh, solid such a way that this particular face of the prism will become perpendicular to the vertical plane so you can see here right now this face is perpendicular to vp in the similar way i can make this face inclined at some angles to vertical plane right so you can see the same face over here which was perpendicular before if I just ro rotate it at some angle then I can see that it is making some angle with respect to the vertical plane <clears throat> and the last condition is that the rectangular faces are equally inclined to VP so because it's a <clears throat> triangular prism so I can rotate it such a way that this face is making equal inclination to this vertical plane the blue color one and this face is making equal inclination with respect to this plane so these both faces are equally inclined to vertical plane and still the axis is perpendicular to hp 
so you will get different scenarios like this when you are solving the problem wherein uh, you will be given the condition with respect to axis being perpendicular to hp or the faces being inclined or the axis itself is inclined so you need to understand these conditions and depending upon this we have to solve the problems <clears throat> so these are few of the different uh, positions of the solid so you can see that here the rectangular face is on hp it means the solid is resting on one of its faces on the horizontal plane so you can see over here so this is one of the face and it is completely resting on the horizontal plane so that time what happens this axis becomes perpendicular to vertical plane so this is one case instead of face resting there can be edge resting also so you can see that longer edge is on hp so the whatever the edge of uh, this prism is there it is resting on horizontal plane the other scenario is rectangular faces equally inclined to hp so if you keep this in such a way that these two faces the bottom two faces are equally inclined to hp then taking a pyramid case axis perpendicular to hp so if you just keep it the base parallel on uh, hp automatically the axis will become perpendicular to hp same pyramid if i rotate it a little bit clockwise direction then i can see that axis will be inclined to hp one thing i have to notice here is that when the axis is inclined to horizontal plane that time the pyramid has to rest either on its edge or on its corner so that condition will be provided right so if i have to make axis incline then definitely it should rest on one of its edges or corner so depending upon that i need to project the solid okay so here one small problem has been taken where is uh, there we have a cube of base 30 mm and it rests on one of its edges on hp such that one of its square face containing that edge is inclined at 30 degrees to hp so draw the projections of the three views so first of all i need to segregate this problem like on which plane it is resting so it says that it is resting on hp then next whether it is resting on its edge or corner i need to check so it says that it is resting on one of its edges <coughs> and then the inclination is given with respect to the face containing that uh, edge on which it is resting so you can just look here in the initial condition i am resting this cube on horizontal plane because he says that it is resting on hp then he says that it is resting on hp on one of its edges so i need to take any one of its edges and incline it so in the next position what i am doing i am just lifting this cube such that it is resting on this particular edge so till where i have to rotate this i have to rotate it up to an angle of 30 degree because he says that <clears throat> one of the square faces containing that edge so this is that edge so the square face of this edge is the bottom face of the prism so this bottom face of the prism is inclined at 30 degrees to hp so you can see here this is making an inclination of 30 degrees with hp so this is the isometric view if you look from the front view you can see this rectangular face inclined at 30 degrees to hp so if i project this into a drawing this is how it would look like so first position it is resting on hp so from the top view i can see only this top face of the square prism so i am drawing only the top face of the square prism which is of 30 mm edge length in the front view same object when i look from the front i can see only this rectangular face so in the front view i am just drawing the rectangular face now because it is a cube so its base is also 30 height is also 30 now in the second position i'm uh, rotating this in such a way that it is resting on one of its edges right so this is the point where i can see the edge over here so i'm rotating in counterclockwise direction in this position such that it is resting on one of its edges such that this face makes 30 degrees with hp so what i will do here the same position i'll copy here and i will rotate it counterclockwise direction 
such that it is resting on the edge b1 dash and c1 dash this particular edge so i have taken this as the resting edge and i am inclining until and unless this face becomes 30 degrees to horizontal plane here 30 degree then well, you know that whenever any solid is inclined and when you project it you will always get the apparent length of the solid in the top view so when you project it down you can get the top view of the solid so combining the front and top view you can get the side view also which will be projected on this vertical plane right so we will be dealing with these kind of problems throughout the projection of solids and uh, i'll be taking uh, one by one different cases and types of problems and uh, solving it in the autocad software and i will try to explain it there itself right so thanks for listening i will be posting uh, the next uh, screen recorded video uh, wherein i'll be directly taking problems and then solving with respect to that in the autocad software thank you